All right, this one obviously is gigantic looking. I'm sure it looks overwhelming. Uh, go ahead and pause the video so you have time to read through it and then unpause. Okay, same concept. So we have two samples that we're working with. We have athletes and non-athletes. We're comparing two different independent groups. And uh, we want to know if there's a difference between them or not. We Actually, what we really want to know is we're looking at the claim, the medical research claim, which is claiming that athletes have a higher mean than non-athletes. So that's what we're looking at. We have two groups here. Um, we have 23 athletes in our sample size, and we have 21 non-athletes in our sample size. Both of those are less than 30. And so because of that, when your sample size is less than 30, we're going to do a two-sample t-test here. So that's the test we're going to conduct. Let's go ahead and write our claim in symbols. So the second sentence says, a medical research center claims that athletes have a greater mean than non-athletes. So we're going to name, we're going to label the athletes as sample number one and non-athletes as sample number two. And we're claiming that Athletes are going to have a greater mean than non-athletes. I've used the wrong symbol there. I'm sorry about that. So really what, we're, what we want to do is say, not just for this sample, but for everywhere, the mean for group number one, the athletes, is greater than the mean for group number two. So that's our claim. That's our claim in symbols. Same thing that we did with chapter seven. You write the complement. The complement would be that the mean for the athletes would be the opposite of that, which is less than or equal to the non-athletes. Um, in order to tell which is the null and which is the alternative, it always has to do with the, the uh, equal bar. The equal bar is right there. And so this one is the null hypothesis. That means the claim is an alternative hypothesis. And we're going to conduct a right-tailed test because my alternative, my HA statement, has the symbol pointing to the right. So that's right-tailed test. Let's go to the calculator. All right, I apologize in advance for the lighting and the, it's all off kilter. Anyway, sorry about that, everybody. So two sample T test, here we go. Oop, sorry about that. Okay, stack key, we gotta go over to our tests. This is a two sample T test because our sample sizes are less than 30. Uh, we're entering stats because we already have the mean and standard deviation. So it asks for things in a completely different order than it did for the z-test. So first it says x bar 1. That means what's the sample one, sa excuse me, what's the sample mean of your first measure? I've already got these typed in there. Um, so athletes are 56. So our sample mean is 56. Sx is sample standard deviation for 1. So our athletes are measure 1. Standard deviation was 4.9. N of 1, that means how many were there in your first group? There were 23 athletes. Now we go to X bar 2. That wants the sample mean for your second group. It was 47. I've already got that entered. Your sample standard deviation for the second group was 3.1. I've already got that entered. Sample size was 21 for the second group. Scroll down. Um, and in this case, our HA statement, our alternative statement, has, was greater than, so we select the greater than symbol. Um, in this case, when you're doing t-tests, you come up with this thing called pooled. And you'll notice that your book examples do have a final statement, and I didn't, I didn't have it in here, but it will say, um, assume the population vari variances are equal or the population variances are not equal. So in this case, we're going to assume that they are equal, if your population variances are equal, meaning both of those things, uh, in this case, athletes and non-athletes, have the same normal curve, you're going to select yes for pooled. If they say the variances are different, you're going to select no for pooled. So we're selecting yes. It's only You only do that for the t-test. Calculate. We're interested in the p-value. Now notice again, I see a 3.7. I know it's hard for you to see in this video, but if you follow along, you'll see it. 3.7. We cannot have a probability more than one. So when you see a whole number greater than one, you know to look to the right. You'll see an E, and that tells you your scientific notation. In this case, it's E minus 9. So we have a tiny decimal here. 3.77 if I round, E to the ninth. 
So that p-value, um, if we do 3.77 times 10 to the negative ninth, because that's what it had, e minus 9, that means moving the decimal 9 places, which means you have 8 zeros here. Okay, so I already know my p-value is going to be way less than my level of significance of 0.05. So p is definitely less than 0.05. The golden rule from chapter 7 says when that happens, you reject the null, the ho, the null hypothesis. And now we have our final decision about their claim. We go to the chart that we have. If you have rejected the null and your claim is an HA, or your claim is an alternative, that means you had enough evidence. Whenever you reject the null, that means you had enough evidence. And we would say here to support the claim because an HA is something you support. To support. Oops, sorry, I was going to put this, the HA, but you support the claim. Sorry. So enough evidence to support the claim is your final decision.